I'm Robert McMullen, MD. I'm a psychiatrist uh, in New York City. I trained in medical school at uh, Georgetown in Washington, D.C. and I did my residency at Columbia Presbyterian in New York. I've been in practice 36 years, mainly concentrating on psychopharmacology, the use of medications to treat various psychiatric illnesses. And five and a half years ago, we added TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. This has been uh, quite a radical shift and advance in psychiatry. And we have brought 50% or more of patients with treatment resistant depression all the way to normal. But today, I want to talk about Parkinson's disease. There's a number of different neurological disorders that have been successfully treated with TMS, although these treatments are not FDA approved yet, but there are double blind studies showing they work. And these include Tourette's syndrome and uh, strokes where the TMS helps the uh, rehabilitation to be faster and more complete and uh, even seizure disorders. Uh, let me give uh, the example of the first one. This 55-year-old lady came to see me with her husband and uh, she wanted to be treated for anxiety and depression. But she had severe Parkinson's and she was shaking like this and her speech was slurred and uh, you couldn't really let her walk by herself. You had to hold on to her when she walked. And I told her, your big problem is uh, Parkinson's disease, not anxiety and depression. Let's go next door and treat it. Uh, I had been hesitant to treat this because I'm not a neurologist and I had trouble getting patients uh, to try this out on even though there's research to show that it works. So I was a little nervous, but this was my opportunity. And we went next door, and, uh, and I gave her a treatment. It's uh, an excitatory treatment on the motor strip that covers most of the body. And we did this uh, five times before Passover, and then we did another 15 times later. But after Passover, I happened to see her son-in-law, and he said, you know, Dr. McMullen, I don't know if it's ethical for me to talk about my mother-in-law. And I said, yeah, you can talk to her, talk about her and tell me. I just can't tell you things about her. <laughs> and he said, well, everybody was shocked at the Passover dinner because the last few Passovers, she's so disabled with this Parkinson's that she would just come and sit there for 10 minutes to make an appearance and then she would leave and go upstairs for the rest of the night. And he said this time she stayed there the whole dinner, she cut her own food, she walked, she talked, she joked with people, and it was just hard for them to believe. She really made a dramatic improvement. By the way, she was already on medicine. She was on a lot of medicine that was giving her side effects. She couldn't even go higher on her medication. I did another 15 or 20 treatments just because she insisted on it, because she was doing so well. But we had really reached the maximum benefit at around this. And I think her, I think her uh, Parkinsonian uh, score was about 90 and it went down to 50 percent less than this and no that's that's a mistake it was about 70 and it went down to under 35. and then she did very well and about six months later she was beginning to relapse and she came back in for five or six treatments and that was doing better and uh and went back home and uh, we had another gentleman who was uh, 84, and uh, his scores went from about 32 down to 16. And uh, 
and he was much more able to to walk around the house or outside of the house and to uh, and to talk more clearly and he even drove the car which he wasn't supposed to do but his wife was happy that he was able to do it because it was improvement with his motor function we're not sure why this works and there are a few theories but one thing that does happen with TMS is it increases plasticity in the brain and uh, by this we mean the brain's ability to change, for the neurons to change and take on new functions. So if, if a person has a stroke and they can't move their arm very much, if they keep exercising and, and, and they're in rehabilitation, they can gradually do more and that's because the area that controls the arm, which is on the opposite side of the brain, has recruited neurons that are still living to take over these functions. And the way that the TMS seems to work is that it increases the BDNF, the brain-derived neurotrophic factor. It's a growth hormone in the brain that uh, induces plasticity. And this is why the uh, treatment helps with strokes. It may be a similar uh, reason for helping with Parkinson's. We're not sure. But it doesn't matter. The, it's the, the main thing is, is that it works. There's many things in medicine that we, for decades, didn't know how they work. We didn't know why aspirin lowered a fever. Now we know it has to do with prostaglandins. We didn't know why morphine reduced pain. And uh, we know all the basic science reasons for many of these things now. But not yet for TMS. And uh, I think for any neurological disorder and uh, depression and obsessive compulsive disorder and even bipolar depression, people should seriously consider using TMS as a treatment. And when it works, it often has a long-term benefit both in depression and, and as it is with this lady, actually with the 55-year-old the lady and the 83-year-old man, both of them did not begin to relapse for six months. And then they only needed a few treatments, five or six. They didn't need another 20 or so to uh, recover. So the benefit is long-lasting, and when you do relapse, you don't need the same total number of treatments.